Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the Fan Cave. Bob Pompiani here with you till 11 o'clock tonight. Call. It's 412-575-2600. That's on TV, KDK Plus, and also 93.7 The Fan, where we often simulcast this program. So if you're driving around, give us a shout here. Lots to get into. We'll start with the Pirates, who today were losers again to the Boston Red Sox. And this is three in a row for them. Now six in a row overall, back-to-back -back series sweeps. And everything's falling apart. They're hitting, which carried them really early on when they went 9-2. and two. Now that they're going 2-9, and nine, the hitting has been a problem. Jack Sawinski is struggling. O'Neill Cruz is struggling. He's got that average down to 203. He leads the majors in strikeouts, and his defense has fallen apart at times. Henry Davis is struggling. I don't know if he's overwhelmed by being an everyday catcher now, whatever the case may be. Brian Hayes has not hit a home run. They're lacking power. Tellez, just one home run. And so they got issues, and they have decisions to make. So the question moving forward, and I know it's still April, so we got to keep this in mind, but they are 11 and 11, and they're in fourth place now. Once 9 and 2 at first, they had a chance to go 10 and 2. David Bednar blew a save, and then everything's changed the other direction. And as far as this six game losing skid, I look back to the, you know, Jared Jones 59 pitches. I still don't really understand why that was the case. Ben Sherrington today said on his radio show that it wasn't that he made some sort of mandate down, and it was the uh, coach's decision, Derek Shelton's decision. Uh, and listen, I understand why you want to keep a young guy from overwork status because it can hurt your arm down the road. But at the same time, he had thrown 59 pitches that night. 50 were for strikes. Didn't seem any urgency to get him out of there. and seemed like he wasn't struggling at all, and yet they took him out of the game. Anyway, uh, today, you know, bad base running. They had two guys thrown out at second base for no reason. Uh, you know, bad fielding, although Jared Triolo, I thought, made a really good two-run saving catch over the shoulder to end the fifth inning. But, hey, bottom line is they're mired in a bad situation right now. Yasmani Grandel had a home run today. He's uh, on a rehab. He's going to be up here pretty soon, so it would seem to me that Henry Davis would be the guy who's going to be headed down. And, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Even if you're number one overall pick, sometimes you've got to work through things. And just ask Joey Bart, who um, – is here now and was with San Francisco as the number two overall pick and with a new team. It takes time and, and there's nothing wrong with going now working on something to try to get it better. But they got to get his bat going. There's no question about that. They have issues with offense and he's not hitting. So eventually when Yasmani Grandel is ready, I would imagine he'll get a time in the minors. At least you'd think that. Another guy who may benefit from it is O'Neill Cruz, although I don't think they'll do that. In fact, today, uh, Sherrington also talked about the fact that it was probably in their best interest to, to ride it out with him, keep playing him. That may be good, but he's struggling. He needs some help right now. So uh, if it can't be available here at this level, then you wonder where. But, you know, maybe a break? Apparently not. But at some point, um, you know, he just looks confused up there. He looks like he's lost confidence. In fact, he said that after the game, that he's struggling a little bit with his confidence. So your take on the Pirates at 11-11. and They got Milwaukee coming in for the first of four, and Milwaukee's been red hot. They won again today over St. Louis, so they'll be in town. 412-575-2600. Hit me up on Twitter. It's at KD Pomp. We'll also get into the Penguins this week because it was their clean-out day after they got eliminated from the postseason for the second year in a row. You know, tomorrow would be two years ago that they got into their 16th consecutive postseason. That's the anniversary date. Uh, since then, it's just not happened for them. And the shame of it is both Crosby and Malkin had played back-to-back -back years where they didn't miss a game, 82 games each. And yet in those two seasons, they fail to make the playoffs, which tells you their problems go beyond those guys, specifically beyond Crosby. Malkin's had his issues, I think, with his sporadic play at times. But they got to find more bottom scoring, younger people to come into the lineup who can make a difference. I was watching Winnipeg, Colorado tonight. That was an interesting game. One, seven to six, the Jets beat the Avalanche to lead that series one zip. Man, they got a tenacious group on that Winnipeg Jet team. They are hungry. They go to the net. They're physical. I think when you look at the trade for Gensel, uh, you know, they got a guy who, who's been good in return. He's, he's come here. He's done a very good job in that sort of gritty role. They need more people like that. Uh, and I think it's Kyle Dubas' situation. He's got to try to make that work and, and see what happens. But largely, they're going to stay the course with the big so-called four. And if that's the case, you know, they're another year older. You're going to have to come up with people who can help them quite a bit. 
uh, and we'll see if they can do that. 412-575-2600. This is also the draft week. As I said, we have a special coming up on Wednesday night right here. It is called Drafting a Dynasty, and that's exactly what happened in 1974. We'll talk about that. Who the Steelers may pick, I want to hear from you at 412-575-2600. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. We're live on KDKA Plus and 93.7 The Fan. Our GMC Sierra tweet of the night or X of the night comes from Justin Ray Golf. He does a great job covering uh, golf and he contributes to the athletic. How about this? Scotty Scheffler leads by five in the final round suspended for the night in Harbor Town. He already has won twice this season by four plus shots. Instances in the last 30 years of a player winning by three or more times on a PGA Tour with that many shots by four shots or more. Tiger Woods, 2000, he did it five times, 2003, three times. Scotty Scheffler is going to do it this year and he's making it look easy. And again, congrats to Nelly Corda on the LPGA Tour. Five straight wins on that tour. Nancy Lopez, Annika Sorenstam, the only two to ever do that. So she is quite a player as well. All right, let's go to the lines. We've got a lot of people want to talk at 412-575-2600 here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Apollo is our first destination. We have John. We haven't heard from anyone in Apollo in a long time. What's up, John? How you doing, Bob? Hey, thanks for having me on. Sure. Uh, I appreciate it. Bob, watching the Pirates is also it's starting to get painful. It's the same thing over and over and over again. You know, when the same thing keeps happening with the same result, you got to go back and take a look at managing here. Something's not right. I don't know how they're ever going to pull out of this funk, but it's getting monotonous and it's so sad to watch a team we thought was going to be really good. And yeah, they started nine and two, and they teased it. you a little bit, John. They did. Um, but you're right; it is tough. And, and and watching the lack of development, I guess, is concerning. Twenty-two games into this, so there's still a long way to go. But you'd expect guys to be taking steps forward here on a consistent basis. And I guess the word I'm looking for is consistency. We have not seen a lot of that. And quite frankly, Andrew McCutcheon's really struggling as well. Um, I might be tempted at this point to get Henry Davis's bat going just to bank him the DH for a while if I'm going to keep him up here and just get his mind on hitting because they need him to be hitting. He's, he looks like he's really pressing at the plate, and that's not a good look for someone who you know is really trying to do his best, but you overdo it sometimes. So... Uh, and Cruz is undisciplined, uh, striking out way too much, not putting the ball in play. With a guy like that, his best asset is his speed. He has these long strides. Just put the ball in play. Good things can happen if you do that. And their defense has abandoned them of late. So there's a lot of things not to like, but uh, hopefully things will get better. And, you know, they need to get Skeens up here. And I I'm sure he'll be up here sometime early May. That's the way I'm looking at this. They've already qualified to give him that extra year. They've checked that box. So you don't have to worry about that so much. Back to the lines we go. Will in McKee's Rock joins us right now on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. What's up, Will? Hey, Bob. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank good. you. Thanks for taking my call, sure. as always. Um, I wanted to talk Andrew McCutcheon with you, if I could. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to ask this question because I'm such a fan, but do you think the game has passed him by? No, no, because I, I, I think he can still play well. What I think is it's just, you know, he's up there. I mean, he's, uh, he's not the same player he once was. And I'd say that about a lot of guys who are in, you know, late 30s trying to play baseball. Um, I still think when he gets in there, he can go on streaks. He, he's probably a, a streaky hitter like a lot of good hitters are in baseball. But so far, it's just not been there. And they need better from anyone who occupies that DH position. So... Uh, I'm glad he got that 300th home run. Hopefully he can add a little bit to that because they need power also as a group. But overall, the most concerning thing to me is, is this continuing uh, problem with developing younger players up here. You need to have it. You need to have it consistently. It can't just be for a couple of weeks and then it goes away. They have too many guys they're relying on, like Sawinski, as I said, like Cruz, like Davis. They brought in Rowdy Tellez to hit home runs, and he's hit one. Okay, Brian Hayes has zero home runs. Reynolds is struggling at times. Triolo, I thought, you know, he's a good player at second base. He's very, very good at uh, playing defense no matter where they put him. Uh, his offense doesn't bother me as much. I expect more out of some of these other guys there. So it's just not happening right now. It started off like crazy. They were hitting multi-hit games, doing all kinds of stuff. And, again, they're in a down streak right now where they've lost six in a row, and they got Milwaukee coming in. It won't be easy. 
All right, let's go out to Kirk in Manor, who joins us right now on the hotline. What's up, Kirk? How are you? Hey, Bob. How are you this evening? Good, thank you. Um, no, you're more in the loop than I am, but I was wondering if you heard anything like I'm hearing. The Steelers trading their first draft pick this year for Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> anything you know we we've talked and tonight on the show now we're going to address this just so you know at 11 35 join us jason Mackey, chris muller marco boli um I, I will say this I, I don't expect that to happen but i do think the steelers legitimately like a lot of teams would be interested why because the steelers if they make a play for anyone to me it's it's got to you have to be a veteran but who doesn't have a lot of years you know on his resume in other words, Patrick Queen is 25 years old, I think it is. He's already established himself in Baltimore. So he comes here as a 25-year-old, which is still relatively young, and you still have many years ahead of him. Those are the kind of free agents they would like to get or people they would like to include. So, you know, Brandon Ayuk is 25 years old. He has already established himself as a tremendous receiver, better than George Pickens at this point. And, you know, the problem is you have to give up whatever draft equity. But more than that, it's the salary. He wants the kind of salary that a lot of these elite receivers want. I don't know if they can do that or not. So I don't know if that's on the table, off the table. It's probably been talked about maybe too much. But if it should happen, that's going to be the big concern. Can they fit it all in, knowing that maybe next year you're going to have to come up for money for your quarterback situation one way or the other, whether it's Russell Wilson or Justin Fields or whomever. So those concerns are always out there. Back to the lines. We got Chuck in Uniontown on line one. Hello, Chuck. Welcome. Good evening, Bob. Once again, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bob, it's, it's early. It's, it's a carpet coffee of last year with the Pirates. They get, you know, that the, well, it's, well, the, the, the actual numbers aren't that important, but the pattern is the same. Uh, good start, promise, and an end. They, they got swept in back-to-back -back series last year. Maybe a little yep. bit later, but still, uh, still similar to this, and back to back. And again, you're you're right, Bob. There, there's no development. There's no moving forward. It's you know, it's it's the same thing. And I was one who thought from the very beginning, don't don't go gung ho on O'Neill Cruz right from the start. You don't know what you're going to get. He didn't play practically all the last year. You know. Uh, you can't automatically say that he was going to be extremely productive. So yeah, I mean, Chuck, it's a concern. And when you know O'Neill Cruz, I know he missed all of last year. Maybe that's a hampering him at some point. I'm not sure, but they got to get better out of him. They do, and just put the ball in play. Even if you're not hitting for power, at least you can get on base and do some things that way. The other thing they've done now, fundamentally, is they've fallen apart. They're you're not winning small ball games. They need to do that once in a while too. But. Like, for example, the last Red Sox run today was a walk, a stolen base, a balk, and then an error. Okay, Pirates can do that, too, if they get on base, but you got to get on base to do that, too. So, um, you know, they leave too many runners in scoring position. They had opportunities in this series, but they were outscored 18-4 to four because they couldn't. So now, you just got to keep grinding. And it is 162 games, so it does, it does uh, go on for quite a while, and they can switch this off. Hopefully, it will start tomorrow night. Let's go out to Cliff in Washington, Pennsylvania. Hey, Cliff, how are you? Yes. Go ahead, Cliff. Hey, listen, uh, with, with, with the Pirates, you know, we, we're going through this for the next, you know, last five years this coach been coming up and get first-round draft picks and this and that. They need to just fire him. I know with Tomlin, the, you know, he's, he's had a winning season for 18 years. They was calling for his head. And then that ten was coach, too. I mean, you know, they're talking, they ought, they ought to get rid of him, too, get fresh, fresh blood in there. Cliff's fresh. going for the complete hat trick. He wants everyone out. Move on. <laughs> Let's squeeze in Matt and Butler. Hey, Matt, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Bob. What's hey, up? years ago, you said, you said give, give Charrington, you, you scolded me on the, the sports call. You mm -hmm. said give Charrington and, and, and Shelton a chance. I thought that I was only. T I thought that was only fair at the time. Yes, I, 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 it was. And now, where does that stand? Because I think Shelton, they've he lost the clubhouse. The way he squandered those two games, which you talked about in your preamble, I don't think anybody has confidence that he can manage the game and they play that way. Not one fundamentally thing sound in today's game. No. Not one. Today, getting guys thrown out at second base was not good, Matt. I agree. Uh, and listen, I, I just expect them to be a fundamentally sound team showing some development from some of their young key players. We haven't really seen that on a consistent basis, have we? We haven't. 
and we need to see more of it. You need to see when Skeens goes up here, he, now he's number one overall, just like Henry Davis. But again, sometimes buyer beware. You, you think it's easy to make these picks, and you never know how it's going to actually turn out. Skeens looks very promising, but, um, you know, up here it's a little different game. Davis has found that out. So did Joey Bart when he was with San Francisco found that out. A lot of guys who were picked high in the draft have fallen on hard times. Uh, and that's the challenge of a coaching staff is to make sure they don't to develop them you know quicker and they haven't been able to do that got a lot of uh, tweets real quick i'm going to go to rob in uh, rob zimmer says sorry bob but mccutcheon is done if he doesn't start hitting soon they need to be released mark de stefano on twitter at kd pomp he says i would take a wide receiver in the first round offensive linemen and centers you should be able to find a good one in the lower rounds because there are so many available i don't know about that mark there are a lot of good wide receivers the elite offensive linemen are only, I think, available in the first couple of rounds, maybe. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But that starts on Thursday night. We're due for a break. We'll take it right now. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, and it is nightly right here on KDK Plus and 93.7 The Fan.